My assignment tonight is just to share with us as an exhaustion, not a deep study, the ingredients for a true revival. The ingredients that make for a territorial revival. If these ingredients are not present, there cannot be a move of God within a territory. You desire to see the move of God in Onisha. You desire to see the move of God in Anambra state and then the east of the Niger there are certain spiritual ingredients non-negotiable ingredients you desire to be mightily used by God many of you have come tonight with hearts open to receive all kinds of impartations usually when you find men who are unusually graced people say these are anointed men of God these are graced men of God but there are spiritual requirements and I hope that within the few minutes that I have to share with you as we prepare to pray that God will place in your hands the keys that really sponsor the move of God in terms of personal revival and territorial revival. Why? Because there are many of you seated tonight the destiny of the move of God within your land is upon your shoulder and you have to understand this. Are we blessed? There is a reason why people never see the move of God past religion, past church as we call it. There is a reason why it looks as though in a whole generation, God may just find one, two or three people. It's not his intent to just have such few people. It's not only his desire that all men be saved. It's also his desire that all men rise to the fullness of their potential. A man of God will say, in Christ, everybody has a high calling. There are no low callings in Christ. But I think, respectfully speaking, one of the deceptions that has permeated the body of Christ is the fact that there is no price to be paid to be used by God. Anything of value comes with a price. The refusal to admit and understand that there is a genuine price for revival. There is a genuine price for the anointing. You want to access ancient mantles. You want to be used by God in mighty ways. Precious people of God, there is a price to be paid. The first price, if you want to host a revival in your life, and across a territory is the price of consecration and brokenness. Price number one, brokenness. More than fasting, more than prayer, you can fast and pray as a religious activity. Brokenness. Every time God finds a people broken, you know what it means to be broken? To be broken means to come to a point where you acknowledge the all-surpassing value of Jesus the Christ above ambition, above money, above titles, above preaching, above prayer. All of these things come out from him. Brokenness is when we give up our idolatry, the service and the worship of men and things, and we return to the one true God. You will never, never find a true revival until God finds the hearts of a people broken. God gave man a will. And you see, even at the expense of your eternal destiny, he allows you to make choices and he will respect your choice. When Satan decided to rebel against God, God respected his choice, but there was a consequence. I can tell you this, by the grace of God, I am a student of revivals. I have studied revivals across continents. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few in their lifetime before they passed on. 
There is a reason why many people never experience the move of God across a territory. Guess how the Bible puts it? My people. Even though they are called by my name, first requirement, they must humble themselves. Very hard for man to humble himself because we are like the Laodicean church. I have everything. I am full. I am educated. I am intelligent. I am rich. I have no need for anything. Shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turning from their wicked ways. He says, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will not just stop there. I will hear their land. You want to see a move of God in your family, your jobs, your businesses? You want to see repentance from idolatry and the worship of other gods? It takes hearts that are broken and contrite. It takes broken hearts, not men of God, to bring a revival. You can be a man of God, but if you are not broken, you will never. You see, we live in a world and we live in times where, for many of us, Jesus is just the wisest option among the many options available. So whilst we choose him, we still keep other options, hoping if there be a rainy day, Jesus, then I keep my intelligence, I keep my idols, I keep my pride, and I watch what happens. You will never be able to host God with that kind of disposition. The jealousy of God will not allow him to be with anything in your life. If he is not absolutely low, then he will step back and honor your decision until life beats you to your knees and then you call for him again and he's ever ready to come. Most times, you see, people fast and pray but they just do it for the religiosity of it in hope that they will bribe God by that spiritual activity into releasing power upon them and upon their territory. The motif is already corrupted from beginning. There is a state of man's heart that makes brokenness very necessary. Jeremiah chapter 17, please. We'll read from verse 9 and 10. Jeremiah chapter 17. Please help us, media. This is just an exhortation. Jeremiah chapter 17. We'll read from verse 9 and 10. Please read with me. It's projected if you can see. Let's read in concert. Ready? One to read. The heart... And desperately wicked. Please keep that scripture there. We'll go shortly to the next verse. This is the, a verdict from the mouth of the Lord. That the heart of man, no matter how sincere it looks, that there is a component in the heart of man that if not vetted by God, there are tendencies in the hearts of man. You see, the way the tendencies of the flesh work is that they require atmosphere and opportunity to manifest. Just because they have not manifested does not mean it is not there. You may never know that you have pride. You may never know you have lost. Just because an opportunity has not provided for the manifestation of that state, it does not mean it is not there. Who would have known that a young innocent shepherd called David will be the one to kill someone tomorrow and carry another man's wife? You would have looked at that young man. That is the kind of young man who all want to be a pastor in your church. That is the kind of young man every lady here would want as a husband. However, that was a murderer right there in that bush. So before you surprise yourself, God says, come, let me vet you. And you say, Lord, based on my parameters, I think I am all right. And he says, you need to understand something. There is no process of time with me. I am both Alpha Omega. I see tendencies. So before you destroy what I want to do with you, come and submit yourself and let the maker make you. The heart of man. You don't have to be wicked. It is a state of the fallen man. You never knew that titles matter to you until the day they gave you one. And then someone forgot to call you that title. And you are even surprised yourself. Wow. So this is the reason why I can't sleep. You never knew that money can mean a lot. 
when you are poor, don't say you are humble. You don't have anything to, to, to contrast pride with, you see. For instance, there are no limits to the tendencies that are in the hearts of men. So every time we come to God, Lord, anoint me, use me. He says, I want to use you, but not this version of you. There is something I must do to you. I must make you. I must break you. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. The first five chapters, we see a true prophet of God, not a fake prophet, not a false prophet, called Isaiah. He began the book of Isaiah by prophecy. Isaiah chapter 6, please, verse 1, and then we'll return back to this scripture to wrap it up. The first requirement for a revival, both personal and territorial, brokenness. From chapter 1 to 5, we see him prophesying. If you are told Isaiah as a man of God that something is wrong with you, he will insult you and say, go and look at the track record of my prophecies and all that I'm doing. But then the Bible says in chapter 6 and verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, it says, I also, I saw the Lord. Isaiah saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. He saw the train of his robe. Because in ancient times, the length of the train of a king's robe was a reflection of his majesty. And in this case, he said the train of his robe to the temple. And then Isaiah was broken by himself. And here was his verdict. A prophet, he said, woe is me. I am undone. This is not condemnation. This is awareness. In the presence of the Holy God. You know you have met God when you see something to change in your life. If you claim you met God and you go back with nothing that requires change, it's not the God of the Bible you met. This is where I have a problem with many, many supposed divine encounters. I have met Jesus. I will share with you my story. Let me tell you, if, if the Jesus of the Bible appears to you, it will take you more than one year to be back as a normal human being again. The first thing that happens to you in the presence of his holiness you will be aware of the extent of your filth and inadequacy it's not condemnation that is the beauty and the power that comes with you are we blessed and Isaiah said I am a man of unclean lips he said I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips you thought God would say, no, 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 that's too much humility. It was true. And he picked this are happening in the earth does not mean heaven is recognizing it. Just because conferences are happening Apostle Joshua Selman moving around and preaching does not mean heaven is recognizing it. This is where the deception of ministerial activities destroy people. You can be advancing, men can be clapping and heaven is still saying, who shall we send? Who shall we send? Who shall we send? Oh, I'm a great man of God. Who shall we send? And for the first time, Isaiah realized that he was just doing his thing. He said, here am I, and me. But the first law is that in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. There's something that must die for you to see. In the year that my pride died, I saw. In the year that my search for fame died, I saw. You will never see him with those luggages. You want to see him, the price is death. The price for life is death. Please listen to what I'm telling you. You want to host God's power? There are certain levels of impartation that you cannot, it's not, it's not just, it's not everything that is transferable. There are things that you have to dig your well through death by yourself. Are we blessed? You want to speak over a territory. And you want the entire angelic, um, angelic family to back you. You want to speak and principalities and powers who hear? No. It will take more than English and more than good dressing. 
it takes death. You ask the sons of Skiba. They most likely have attended a few lectures and a few conferences. And they said, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Brokenness. Listen to me. Brothers and sisters, God is calling us to a higher and a deeper level. Brokenness, where at the end of it, all you want is Jesus. Not church, not man of God, not titles, not fame. You know the end of your brokenness when the only thing left is Jesus. Not Jesus and fame. Not Jesus and power. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. When I began my journey with the Lord, I will continue to say it. My intention was never to be a man of God. My intention was not fame, recognition, power. All I wanted was to know him with all my heart. I desired him more than preaching. You can use God as a ladder for fame. Because you hear that men of God sit in front. That motivation would drive you to 40 days fasting. From day one, you were already wasting your time. If God shows you mercy in that fast, he will lead you to the correct scripture that resets your understanding. There are many of you seated here. Whilst you watch us come with the protocol and you watch the men of God, that ambition, you desire to also sit in front. Let me advise you on time. You must submit and allow the Holy Ghost purify that motive. In priesthood, there is honor, but that's not the motivation. Till today and till forever, I love him more than preaching. I love him more than fame. You've heard me say it. I will cancel ministry 1,000 times. Preserve my relationship and his presence there is nothing in my life and may God forgive me if I'm lying but there is nothing in my life today that I cannot surrender to you absolutely nothing in a heartbeat and you believe me this man standing before you these things have been tested God is not a fool when you speak like that you will test it Abraham take now thy son thine only son whom thou lovest Go and offer him a mountain. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life, be glorified. want to see the move of God in Onisha the first key is not just to say God come the first key is to become like the woman with the alabaster box she took her pride she took her pain she took her wealth and broke it at the feet of Jesus she didn't pour some and kept some when you love business more than his presence you will never see him come when you love ministry more than his presence, when you love anointing more than his presence, whether Jesus is there or not, once there is anointing, you are interested. Am I wasting your time? You must value the presence of God. You must value your time of intimacy with God. Your time alone with him. Can I tell you this? With all due respect to those co-laborers in the gospel, 
If a major part of your life is on the pulpit, you are in trouble already. A major part of the life of a minister must be behind the veil. That is what gives power to what you do here. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. I love your This was how I began my pursuit. I was not looking for ministry. I was not looking for preaching. I was desperately touching for Jesus. Desperately. Then, you've heard my story. The night he came to me. King of Kings. I know he's alive. Number one, because the word of God says so. But number two, I have seen him. The resurrected Christ. He didn't follow a door to come in. He came. When God wants to come, nothing stops him. All. A door is for you, not for him. When Jesus came into my room, never said a word, yet I heard everything he was saying. That was when I Realize in the realm of the spirit that you do not have to talk to speak. That light is also a language. The entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the symbol. Now listen very carefully. I lay down flat on the ground like a dead man. I'm standing before his majesty. This is the man preachers stand to represent every Sunday. My goodness, do they know who he is? Jesus, not an archangel. He stood before me. How I did not die. The only thing I can tell you is that it's like it's the son standing before an ant. And after a while, he stretched his right hand towards me and a beam of light light that no human being can stand close to and survive that light entered me all of it when it entered me it left the next time i took my bible i saw things that i never learned what is this what is happening to me Your grace has found me just as I am Empty handed but alive in your hands Your majesty Majesty Forever I am changed by your in the presence of your majesty i share this with you for a reason it's not to brag because many of you i'm explaining to you the encounters you have been having and to let you know that this spirit of revival coming upon your territory is real I have met many of the saints that have departed. Now, that is not the basis of our confidence. The basis of our confidence is scripture. But I can tell you. In one of the encounters, the Lord came to me and said, Son, from today I give you my presence as a gift. And then I saw this angel standing. He said he will walk with you 
and I said what is his name and he said he's called the angel of the Lord's presence that's what is responsible for these things you are seeing I'm explaining it to you so you don't think everybody is some false prophet somewhere no 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 but it takes hunger in one of these encounters I was speaking with a man who came to me and he was talking to me and when he was done he turned and was going and I called him I said sir you did not tell me your name he turned back to me and smiled and said Paul and he turned and kept moving you see this is an election of grace this is why we do not boast there is no place for the flesh you know it is God that is transforming you because it leaves a deposit of humility in your life you are aware of your sheer inadequacy outside of his hell hallelujah are we together now yes. so when you hear apostle joshua selman it's not because there is anything in, our, in, in us by our own strength our sufficiency is of Christ who has made us able ministers able ministers hallelujah are we blessed now so the first key is genuine brokenness you must get to a point where you love God more than money not just that you heard that when you come to God you make clean money so you came to him because you don't want to make dirty money. It's still idolatry. If he asks you to shut down your business for his presence, can you do that? Hmm. If he asks you to shut down your reputation for the sake of his majesty and glory, can you do that? Sorry about that. If it's not in your presence, if it's not from your hand if it's not by your spirit don't let me have it for everything i need is in you if it's not in your presence if it's not from your hand If it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. That's the prayer now. Will you search me? Till my heart becomes It says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you are everything. Everything, Lord, you are everything. Hear me, man of God. You want God to do much with you? Forget about ministry and focus on His presence. That's how to be in ministry. You must love His presence more than preaching. I love him from the depth of my heart if he never blesses me I owe him my life it is true 
This is not just some man of God talk on stage. Believe me. You want to find power with God? You want God to use you within a dispensation? My brothers and my sisters, it's more than laying on of hands. It's more than a bottle of oil. The price for life is death. The price for all of God is all of you. Not your money. Not your offering. You can give God your offering and carry that nonsense. It's your heart I want first. This is the key that controls superior dimensions of the power of God of revival. On it shall hear me until God finds men and women who can be broken, men who can hold on to the four horns of the altar without shame and say, Lord, this is your boy coming to you. They call me their man of God, but your boy is here again. I'm right here where you met me before you lifted me no matter the lifting I'm not stupid I still realize and God says you are doing this for me you are ready to step into another level you want to see the power of God in your churches you want to see the power of God as you preach it is not by gimmicks no There's gonna be a great awakening. In, there's gonna be a great revival in your land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Hear me? every time the move of god is about to happen in a territory there are two spirits that are always released within that territory personified in two men number one is called enoch enoch represents the spirit of intimacy and hunger it says an enoch walked with god the seventh man from creation Genesis chapter 5, I believe, and verse 24, thereabout. Enoch walked with God. Not Enoch built churches. The greatest testimony is that Enoch walked with God to the point where he was not. Preachers, let us not let ministry become an idol. You want to command power? some of you god is speaking to you you have been busy preaching from the day engagements came you left him you have been working for god and yet you stopped working with god a long time ago many of you your prayer groups intercessory groups you started as men with hunger at the back of a tree but now that they've identified you you started preaching here and there you don't care it doesn't matter let me move my destiny forward you say brokenness god is calling you there are many of us to repent is not a word for sinners to repent is how we are transformed. Realign back to the standard. Many of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. I want to tell you what happened in your city by prophecy. While men slept, the enemy came. He cannot sow when you are alive. He said, awake thou that sleepest. While men slept. You know how people sleep? satan occupies them with activities that are outside of christ just keep making the money i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that just keep making the fame just keep adding credentials and then the enemy steps in and begins to plant seeds seeds of rebellion seeds of spiritual laxity he discerns that there is a family that should carry the next prophet over onicha 
and very quickly he plants a seed in that young man some of them the devil destroyed their destiny by sending them abroad they had no business going anywhere but he relocated them fast they called it breakthrough like Saul of Tarsus they went out of the will of God can I tell you this look at me one of the reasons why God is organizing this conference this year you may not know he's honoring the cry and the covenant of those who died serving the purposes of God you are the covenant keeping God you are the covenant keeping God listen your territory is full of the history of men and women who live for the gospel some of them died and never had that reward that is the burden that came on this man is you sometimes you don't even know what is moving you and God says no I must find a witness in Onisha the blood of someone is speaking and saying, Lord arise there has to be a move of the spirit the anthem of our nation says that the labor of our heroes past shall not be in vain there are missionaries who serve God they never tasted of the honor of priesthood and they went Reverend Cannon, you are crying but let me tell you the burden that is on you is more than just a man trying to make a name is prophecy many of you here you are walking you just think you are moving but there is an ancient prophecy driving you that thing making you not to sleep when others when others are sleeping you cannot sleep is more than you is more than an ambition is prophecy Enoch is crying within your territory the spirit of intimacy where are the men and the women who will hunger after God your spiritual climate is saturated with the spirit the cry there is a cry of the spirit over on each other, over the east of the niger where are those who must arise in this season in power to love and hunger after God men and women alike time I step into a territory the Holy Spirit will reveal to me what he desires to do I went to bed yesterday and in the dream of the night I was taken somewhere I don't know where within your region and I saw graves that's what I saw suddenly there was like light from heaven and graves began to open this is what I saw I saw people that were dead coming back to life Your city will not only be known for business, it will be known as careers of fire. There will be restoration of mantles and graces. It's not only buying and selling. 
Lo, fishers of men, makers of destinies. Please sit down for a minute. We're about to pray. There are two spirits that forerun revival. Number one is Enoch. A representation of hunger and passion and fire. The second spirit is Elijah. The spirit of prayer and supplication that restores the ordinances of God and the patterns of God again. He said before the great and terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will come again. When John came to forerun Jesus, he came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Prayer, supplication, prayer that opens the heavens. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, he says. Please hear me, believers. God is not wasting your time tonight. The revival that will come out from this night will surprise you. Once again, the altar of the Lord will be built because fire is about to come from heaven. When the prophets of Baal tried from morning till night, the Bible says when it was the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah said, build me with 12 stones. Let me remind God of his covenant. Now watch this. Please sit down. We have to pray because I need to minister to you now. We have to work with time. Just a few minutes and we're done. I don't intend to keep you. Hear this. The first assignment of Elijah is to restore the patterns of God. Because you see, the spirit of the Antichrist that is represented in that she goddess called Jezebel is a spirit that attempts to frustrate the purposes of God and empower the prophets of Baal. Under the leadership of Jezebel, she is a spirit that seeks government. She is activated only when she marries the king. The Bible talks about her in Revelation 18. That in one hour, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. It's become a habitation of demons. The kings and the merchants of the earth who have lived luxuriously through their fornication with her. That goddess that sits upon a horse. The Antichrist system, Jezebel. It says all the kings will bemoan her and said in one hour is your judgment come. Jezebel is a businesswoman. The Bible now begins to list all the things that she sells. And one of the things she sells is the souls of men. Hear me? There must be a restoration of the spirit of prayer within your territory. There must be a restoration. Those of you who are on campus, read your book study but in addition to your study don't leave god behind anything minus god is nothing there are families right now hearing me and i'm speaking apostolically go back and restore the altar of prayer again before you made it you prayed in the night before you slept when you woke up in the morning now i am busy it's a deception because an attack is coming every time an attack is coming the spirit of fear and the spirit of carelessness and coldness comes upon a people while men slept for some of you this is not how you started with god when you started with god your fire how dare you miss times of prayer how dare you miss times of the word? How dare you can listen to worship for hours, but right now five minutes and you've slept. It's an attack. Wake up. The altars that fought your father have seen that you are rising to become a voice and they are now coming to you 
they want to bring you down Elijah Enoch intimacy and passion with God prayer and supplication because nothing happens in this side of God's kingdom until there is a union between the spirit and the bride it is the spirit and the bride that tells the word come when the spirit says healing come the bride on earth must echo it to healing come for healing to come when the spirit says revival come the bride must also say revival come it is the spirit and the bride the spirit is ever willing to come upon your territory but there must be brides enough brides indeed who are ready to say maranatha god in a new way come upon the land of onicha can i tell you this you will begin to see revivals break out in marketplaces people are buying and selling suddenly the power of god comes on someone and he's listening to a message he will come on his knees and say even though i just bought something from you lead me to jesus people will wake up with dreams and start running on the street by sunday when you come to your church your gate is closed but you will find people holding on to the gate and crying i don't know the name of what is happening to me but i need to repent i need jesus Please hear me. Please hear me. We're about to pray. I may not be able to mention all the other ones because our time is gone. But sufficient is the charge for tonight. We need a restoration of hunger and love for God. Onisha, do not lose the spiritual heritage God has given you to the devil. You now see that when your spiritual life goes down, it's a matter of time your business will start having issues issues you can't explain you are losing money anyhow you are not even explaining someone is cheating you someone is defrauding you they are all symptoms of something that is going wrong in the realm of the spirit i've come like i said to join faith with all the fathers within the land all the veterans of the gospel and together we are going to lift up a banner that says Jesus is still king over Onisha. And this night we will announce to every devil, Onisha is not an idol worship place. An Ambra is for Jesus. And every home is for Jesus. Thank God for what the fathers worship. But here comes a generation that only believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the son of the living God but like I taught in the morning cheap confession is not where it stops there must be grace to defend what we are saying is that true so on it shall hear me let every other name fade away let every other name fade away till there's only jesus take your place jesus take your place four things will happen now very quickly number one listen carefully I requested by the spirit that we bring our prayer requests four things very quickly number one is we're going to be praying and then I will be ministering to the sick I may not have the time to prophesy because our time is gone and we have to respect the time but I want to pray for the sick and I want to pray for people who are oppressed miracle signs and wonders are a revelation of number one the love of the father number two the power of God I believe in miracles I believe the man standing before you is a living miracle there was a time I was diagnosed with a fungal infection that literally ate my head and it was as though hair would never grow again I know what it means to taste of the power of God 
am a miracle. So I want you to be prepared to wave goodbye to every infirmity. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. Never suffer long with evil. Evil always comes pregnant. When you host it, it will give birth to many other disasters in your life. So I'll pray for the sick. If time permits, we could take one or two testimonies. Number two. The second thing that will happen here is we're going to be praying for the requests. This is the most accurate representation of your desires. And we're going to be praying and declaring over it. Number three. Like I requested in the morning, I may respectfully request, even just for a minute or two, maybe one or two of the fathers of faith, the veterans of the gospel, to come stand with me to represent the unity of the church in Onisha. We're going to close that divide that has given Satan allowance, and we're going to speak over the territory. The final thing we're going to do is I'm going to stand apostolically and every gate over this city that is closed. We are opening the two-leaf gates for every good thing that must come into the city. Are we in agreement? Please rise up on your feet. Prayer point number one. Father, arise like the mighty God that you are. Bring me healing. Bring me deliverance right now. Lift your voice and pray. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Ela basha la barusa de que le paratusia. Give me an encounter tonight in the name of Jesus. Give me a supernatural visitation. Hallelujah. Now listen. Acts chapter 10, please, and verse 38. I'm about to pray for the sick now. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. It says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Peter is teaching the first message preached to the Gentiles. This will be the first salvation of the Gentiles. This was in the house of Cornelius. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, it says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible records that he went about doing good. It takes the anointing to do good. It takes more than a good heart. Went about doing good, listen carefully, and healing not they that were sick, they that were oppressed. Every sickness is an oppression. Every sickness. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray. Listen very carefully, please. Wherever you are trusting God for a miracle, all through this magnificent theater and the, so many outside, I'd like you to lay your hands there right now. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. Go ahead. Now arise, O oh Lord. Would you come to your resting place? You and the ark of your might. Then we will rejoice as we clothe in your righteousness. We celebrate your love. Listen, I want you to be.